Now we're going to talk about how we do mathematics with significant figures. So there are a set of rules on how you do mathematical calculations using specific significant figures such that you always have a consistent behavior in the significant figures. The whole goal of this is that if somebody else looks at your work later on, they'll know what assumptions you made in your calculations so that they can account for those exact same assumptions in their calculations. So the first thing we got to talk about is how do we denote how many significant figures a number has? And the biggest problem students have with this is what we call the question of zeros. What zeros in a number count and what zeros in a number don't count? Easy way to think about it is zeros that denote magnitude, solely there to place the decimal point somewhere, are not significant. However, zeros that are part of the actual measurement, all right, if you cannot rewrite the number without those zeros, then they are significant. So let's take a look at this. Here are three examples. The first two are good examples, the last one's bad. So in the first one, you'll note 2,305.0. We say that has five significant figures. Now the zero in between the three and the five is easy. That's part of the number. Okay, that's significant. A lot of people have problems with that trailing zero. Now all trailing zeros are considered significant if there's a decimal point in there, right? So the only reason you would have that zero to the right of the decimal point is because that zero is part of the measurement itself. That's denoting that that number could have also been 2,304.9 or 2,305.1. There's a variance in that last digit. If when I was measuring that value, the only possibilities were 2,305, 2,306, or 2,304, then the point zero serves no purpose and you wouldn't have it as part of the measurement, all right? So we would say all of those are significant and therefore that number has five significant figures. Now look at the one below it. Now we've got 0 0.00456. You're like, well, there's a bunch of zeros there and I can't write that number without those zeros but you can. Now I know some of you are gonna hate this, but I'm gonna say, think back to what we call scientific notation, or you might've referred to it as exponential notation. I can rewrite that number without the three zeros in the front of it. I can write that as 4.56 times 10 to the minus three, and it will be the exact same number. So I don't need those leading zeros in there Leading zeros are never significant, okay? Leading zeros are never significant because you can always rewrite the exact same value without them. You probably have to resort to scientific notation, but you can do it. So we would say that number has three significant figures because the first three zeros don't count. Now the last one's a little tricky. You're like, oh, but they're trailing zeros, so they all count, right? Note. Put a caveat on this, that all trailing zeros when their decimal is involved are significant. There's no decimal in this number. This is an ambiguous number. Really would not like this number in science. And I wouldn't use this number very often because there's no way by looking at this number to know how many of those digits are actually significant. At the very least, two of them are, the five and the two. I know those two digits are significant. Beyond that, I have no idea. It could be that I can only judge 52 million, 53 million, or 51 million, and hence there's only two significant figures. Or it could be that I could judge the difference between 52 million and 51,999,999, in which case all eight of them are significant. So this is a bad number. We don't typically like numbers that don't have decimal points in them in science. If I wanted to write this as an actual value and tell you how many significant figures it would have, I would rewrite it as an exponential form, as a scientific notation. So if I wrote 5.2 times 10 to the seventh, if I wrote 5.2 times 10 to the seventh, I would know for certain there were only two significant figures. 
because only the digits in that first number in scientific notation, what we call the operand, are significant. If I wrote 5.2000 times 10 to the seventh, I would know it had five significant figures. All right. So let's take a chance and try to do these problems. So I'll give you a second to think about these. Take a moment to look at them. Think about how many significant figures each of them has. So if we look at that first one, 345.00. Well, we know the 3, the 4, and the 5 are significant, so we know there's at least three sig figs. By the way, sig figs, significant digits, significant figures, all means the same thing. All right. Now, we have two zeros in there. They're trailing zeros, and there's a decimal involved, so all five of those digits would be significant. Now we go down to the next one. We've got the two interior zeros. We know those have got to count because they're in between other numbers. So the three zero zero four five, those five significant or those five digits are definitely significant. And they got three zeros leading it. And what do we say about leading? Those aren't significant, so again, here would be five significant figures. Going down to number three. The only zeros involved are in between other numbers, so that means the entirety of it is significant. So that's going to give us a total of seven significant figures. And then the last one is scientific notation. Now again, in a scientific notation, there are two parts. There is the exponent, that's this guy here, and there is the operand, that's this guy here. Only the operand, the 4.6, is significant. This is just denoting how far the decimal point moves to the left or right. So we can always tell the exact significance of a scientific notation by how many digits are in the operand. So we know this has two significant figures. Now we take that, judging how many significant figures are in individual numbers, and then we move that into how that plays into mathematical operations. Okay. Now in math, first, we don't count exact numbers. Okay, So when we're worrying about the significant figures in a calculation, we never worry about exact numbers in there. The reason for this is exact numbers don't have significance. Technically, they have infinite significance. So an exact number is a definition that's in chapter uh, one in your textbook. An exact number is any number that is either directly counted, the classic example of this is uh, oranges in a bowl. If I count the oranges in a bowl, there isn't a plus or minus value to it. There is exactly 12 oranges in a bowl, right? Or a number that is defined. For example, we know that one inch is equal to exactly 2.54 centimeters. So we wouldn't count any of that for significance because we know that is an exact value. It has infinite significance. Okay? So we never count exact numbers when we're doing this. The overarching idea here goes back to what we talked about in the previous talk. Our answer can be no more significant than the least significant value in the problem. So our answer must have the same number of significant figures as the least precise or the least significant value in the equation. Now there's two ways we have to think about this. In multiplication and division, that means we're bounded by the least number of total significant figures in a number. Okay? So we look at all the numbers in a multiplication and division problem, we find the number that has the least number of significant figures and that's how many significant figures our answer can have. In contrast, addition and subtraction problems are bounded by the least number of decimal points. There is a reason behind this. If you want, you can go down a deep, dark, ragged hole looking it up on the web. It has to do with multiplication of error, right? You're like, but multiplication is just adding things over and over. Yeah, and as you add things over and over, any error gets compounded over and over. So that's why there's a difference between the rules. So multiplication and division bounded by the least 
number of significant figures. So you find the number with the smallest number of significant figures, and that controls the overall significance of the problem. And addition and subtraction is bounded by the least number of decimal points. So here's a couple of examples. First problem, 2.5 times 3.25. Now, if you do 2.5 times 3.25, you do not get 8.1. In fact, and I forgot to write this down, so I will have to redo it myself pretty quick. Give me one second. There we go. 2.5 and 3.25. Okay. Gives us 8.125. All right. Well, if I look. I have two numbers there, 2.5 and 3.25. 2.5 has two significant figures. 3.25 has three significant figures. It's a multiplication problem, so I'm bounded by the lowest number, which is the 2. So my final answer, even though it's 8.125 is what my, math, my calculator gives me, my final answer is 8.1. All right? You're like, but what happened to the 2.5? The 2.5 never actually exists. That's the big challenge that students have in this type of work. What significant figures is doing from a mathematical standpoint is it is giving reality to numbers. If I do this in a calculator, the calculator is simply going to give me whatever the mathematical problem generates. But the problem is that's pure math. That's a language. In the real world, I can't get out to 8.125. Imagine this was a ruler measurement, right? I have 2.5 centimeters times 3.25 centimeters, and it tells me I get 8.125 centimeters. Can I measure 8.125 centimeters? Obviously not. One of my people could only measure it to one decimal point. So how in the world am I going to be able to look at two more decimal points? Right, So this is accounting for the real world. So those, that 0 0.025 that you're like, well, it suddenly vanished. What happened to it? It didn't vanish. It was never actually there in the real world. It's kind of just, you know, mental exercise for the calculator. Take, for example, the second one. 3 times 3.567. 3 times 3.567 gives you 10.701. But there's only one significant figure in the answer. So even though my thing comes out to 10.701, it's only 10. And you're like, wait, 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 wait. no, 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 no. 10.7 would round up to 11. True, if it was two significant figures. You count from the left side over, left to right. There's only one significant figure in the answer. So 10.701, the one is the only, at the very beginning, is the only significant figure. So the thing that determines whether that one rounds or not is the next digit, the zero, which means it doesn't round. So my final answer is 10. Same down here, 45.3 divided by 67.9 gives you 0 0.667 to three significant figures, because both of those are three significant figures. So I'll give you a second to try these. All right, so take a moment, write them out real quick. I don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time because we are on YouTube. And since we're on YouTube, I know, miracle of it, you could pause it and go back. We get numbers that look like this. So in the parentheses are the numbers the calculator is going to give you. So 3.45 times 3.45 is going to give you 11.9025. But each of the original numbers only has three significant figures. So the 1, 1, 1.9, that's my three significant figures. Everything after that is no longer significant. So my final answer is 11.9. 9.4 divided by 2 gives me 2.45. Again, since the 2 in the original problem is only one significant figure, there can only be one significant figure in my final answer. So that's the first two. And then we decide whether it rounds or not based on the next digit, which is a four. And it doesn't. So it stays two. The last one gives us 3.300753 times 10 to the fifth. Right? 
I would learn to use scientific notation on your calculator. For those of you who have a TI calculator, it's probably either the EE or EEX key. That's what's used to do the exponential notation. And again, 9.5674 has five significant digits, but 3.45 times 10 to the fourth only has three. The 3.45 are the only things that count for significance. So my final answer can only have three significant figures, so it becomes 3.30 times 10 to the fifth. Now note, we've talked about rounding digits here and there, and that's gonna lead us to a very peculiar rule. For the most part, rounding is fairly simple, all right? If the digit after the last significant figure is less than or equal to four, it stays the same. So for example, say I was gonna round this number, 564.4 to three significant figures. Well, that means the 564, the significant, right? So I would get a cutoff right here, right? And it would be decided by that four, whether I round it or not. And the answer would be no, it stays 564, or what we call rounding down. If the digit after the last significant figure is greater than six, or greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to six, you round up. So now we've got 564.6. And again, we round it to three significant figures. So there's our significance. Since it's six, it rounds up to 565. Now, as you're looking at this, you're like, yeah, that all makes sense, blah, blah, blah. Wait, what about five? Well, five has a really interesting position. Five is in the exact middle, and there's a bunch of statistical arguments about how you should treat five. And I'll be honest with you. Everybody just decides with a rule. We're gonna use the rule that is in the textbook. It's called the even rule of five. And to be honest, in industry, this is probably the most common rule that's used. It's a pretty straightforward rule, but does take a moment to learn and you gotta to remember to use it. So if the last significant figure is even, it stays the same. So what that means is if I had 564.5 and I was rounding to three significant figures, since I had a five, I would employ the even rule of five. I would say, okay, that's my value. My last significant figure is even, therefore it stays 564. If however, the last significant figure is odd, it rounds up to the next even, right? So 565.5 rounded to three significant figures becomes 566. And what this does is statistically, it treats half of them one way, half of the, them the other, which is what you're trying to do. You can see where it gets the name even rule of five. When there's a five, you're always gonna end up with an even digit as the last significant figure, okay? There's an odd rule of five. There's a rule that involves going another digit past the five. There's all kinds of rules. We're gonna stick the one that's in your book, which is called the even rule of five. So hopefully this has helped give you a little idea on how to use mathematics with significant figures.